We're moving along, we're on our way, Zermatt. To get there, it's another spectacular train ride. We're going through the mountains, we're changing trains at Brig onto a smaller train, a narrow gauge train, and that'll take us the final leg with this terrific observation car with this panorama glass scenario so that you can see the mountain peaks and the valley down below. First class Swiss rail. All air conditioned, nice and cool and quiet and comfortable. As the train snakes its way up this long valley to Zermatt. Zermatt's another town that does not allow automobiles, so the only way to get to Zermatt is by this train. People can drive about halfway up the valley and park their cars in one of the villages and then get on the train for the final leg up into the village of Zermatt itself. There's nice scenery out both sides of the train. And there's some side valleys coming down. You see occasional evidence of landslides. There's meadows with wildflowers, cows grazing in the distance. There's some hikers out and about. We're approaching the midpoint of our tour. We started in Lucerne, went to Interlaken, now we're heading for Zermatt. And after Zermatt in a future episode, we'll take you on to Locarno and finally to Zurich. Arriving in the town of Zermatt, our efficient baggage team gets the bags right off the train, very simple to do. And then everybody grabs their own suitcases and pulls them through the train station and we go to the hotel. Now in this case the hotel is right across the little lane from the train station so it only takes us a few minutes to walk from the train right to our hotel. Couldn't be more convenient than that. It's called the Alex Schloss Hotel Tenne. There are two Alex hotels in Zermatt. This one is the Schloss Hotels Tenne. And it's a nice little spot. It's a family owned and operated hotel Hello. Quite small, just has about 45 rooms, nice living room here. We'll be having our breakfasts and dinners together here at the hotel. Nice rooms. Generally we have breakfast together every day on our trips with Hawaii Geographic Society and lunch and dinner is on your own, but in this hotel we had the dinner included as well. Right away we're off on another mountain adventure. Just next to our hotel is the Gorner Grot Mountain Railroad. This is an narrow gauge rack railroad that's going to take us up past some stunning views of the Matterhorn. That's the signature site of Zermatt. The famous Matterhorn will show you quite a bit of different angles of the Matterhorn during our visit here in Zermatt. And we're going further up this Gorner Grot that will show us other views of many peaks in the surrounding mountain range. Some adventurous hikers getting off halfway to do some skiing. We're staying on the train and riding to the top where we're going to have some great views of Monte Rosa and other mountains in the surrounding vista. You're surrounded by 25 different peaks that are over 12,000 feet high when you get to the top of the Gornagrat. You have to walk up this final couple of hundred yards to get to the very top observation platform. And from there, you get the stunning panorama. So don't stop just at the top of the train station or at the restaurant or at the cafe terrace. You want to get to the top, the very top. Easy to get up there. And you will be rewarded with this unbelievable vista. From this spot, you can see more high peaks than any other place in the Alps. This is the place, the Gorner Grot, and especially with the Matterhorn. So we're quite happy to be up here. Our happy little group from Hawaii. And now we're gonna head back down and warm up in the cafe. It's not that cold. It's just barely freezing and it's sunny. There's no wind, really ideal conditions. So you can sit outdoors if you like, or sit indoors in this cafeteria. Most people like to sit outside on the terrace. 
You can see the Matterhorn in the background, Monte Rosa here, Switzerland's highest mountain. The restaurant offers a convenient cafeteria line where they serve up some hot meals, soups, salads, light snacks. Here's our lovely train. This is a brand new train. They've had a train here for a century, but the vehicles, the rolling stock they have now are brand new, just beautifully built and maintained. So it's a very comfortable ride heading back down, but instead of riding all the way down, we decide to walk part of the way down. Once again, and it's a nice hike down. We're going to take a stroll downhill and downhill and downhill. It's all downhill. Some Swiss people love to hike uphill. They feel it's better exercise, but for us, going downhill is just the ticket. You kind of get into the groove and enjoy the scenery, especially with the Matterhorn off there in the distance. And you can kind of float down when you get into the flow of the right speed and the right angle with your feet, or so it would seem. Ah, we made it. Well, not quite yet. We're not all the way down yet. We thought we were, but looking at the signpost, hmm, okay, we have a little bit further to go. Some more downhill legs, passing a, a new house. They build the new ones in the old style using the local materials. There's lots of lumber here, lots of trees growing all around. And they harvest these trees very carefully while preserving the forest. And then soon enough, we are back in the village. What a contrast now. Oh, all of a sudden, it seems quite busy. Zermatt just has one main lane, and then there's some little side lanes and a lot of attractive shops here. A splendid array of backpacks in all sizes, shapes, and styles, and you name it. They've got all the hiking accessories you could imagine, as well as a lot of other kinds of goodies in the shops. Well, back to the hotel, end of the day, and let's have dinner. Nice to be able to just sit down together and share some stories about the day and not even worry about ordering off the menu because they just bring us some great foods out of the kitchen. You have some choice and there it is. Here's chicken, vegetarian entree, there's some soup and wine. Bring your own at this place. Brunello di Montalcino, why not? Some Italian wine. The Swiss also make a good wine. Next morning we are up and at him again. We're going on a major, major journey to a high mountain peak called the Kleine Matterhorn. You can get around by taxi in Zermatt. There's no private cars, but you could get around by taxi if you don't want to walk, or by no, public bus. Free. And this bus was free. That was a nice treat because we were heading for the cable car. So they provide this very convenient transportation. It's only about a half a mile to walk from one end of town to the other but we figure okay there's a free bus and it's right there so we'll take it conserve our energy yeah. for the rest of the morning although we don't have to do much hiking to get up there it's all by cable car and what a cable car this is the highest cable car in Europe it's so high that they can ski in the summertime and especially here in the month of May there's lots of snow and quite a few skiers and snowboarders up there. You have to change cable cars several times and there's several alternative routes that you can take on the way up. You go to Furi, you can go to Schwarze, you can also go to Trocknersteg, and there's Schmutt off in the distance. We'll be doing some hiking on the way back down here. In this case, we're going all the way to the top, up to the Kleine Matterhorn. It's just next to the Matterhorn itself. And we'll be getting even more spectacular views as we get higher, higher and higher into the snow fields. Now we're not there yet. We're just changing cable cars one more time for this final run up the hill. We don't have to walk hardly at all though. It's an easy stroll from one cable car to the next. And this last leg is going to take us up over 12,000 feet high. 
the lift goes 3,883 meters high. Yep, the highest in Europe. It's really quite remarkable up here. So we're up in that thin oxygen zone, over 12,000 feet. You want to take it easy. But we had no troubles, and everything is very convenient. There's Trocknersteg, and one more lift to go, and then we make it all the way up to the top. And here, too, the engineers have been busy at work building tunnels and pathways and snack shops and elevators that take care of us. So it's really no strain at all. Anybody can do this. And then we take a little walk on the snowpack because there's something to see down here. All these skiers going by. And there's a tunnel off in the distance that we're curious about. This is a, a new feature up here, stopping for another group shot, our jump. Hawaii gang. And we are going to explore the inside of this glacier. This guy here. They've actually carved an ice tunnel. It's more than a tunnel, it's a grotto inside the glacier itself. This is just unbelievable. You walk along a comfortable matting and staircase, and it's all lit up inside. They've got these different chambers and rooms and corridors and tunnels all linked together in the most elaborate ice grotto you've ever seen. There's little statues. They have little displays here. There's an ice bar. Nobody there to serve any ice drinks, but maybe they show up once in a while. Display of winemaking in Switzerland. It's kind of reminiscent of the ice hotel that they've got in Sweden. Well, this isn't a hotel, but it sure is an interesting attraction. And then you come back out through that same tunnel, back outside onto the Kleine Matterhorn, up here at 12,000 feet, and then climb up a staircase to the main viewing platform. Here we've got a spectacular panorama of the big high peaks all around us. Many mountains over 12,000 feet high, stretching 360 degrees in a circle around you here at the Kleine Matterhorn. And you can get some views into the town of Zermatt itself, down there nestled away deep in the valley. It's similar to that view up on the Gorner Grot. Both of them are spectacular, and both of them are certainly worth doing, especially on clear days like this. We were so lucky with the weather. No clouds to obscure our vision whatsoever. You can imagine on a cloudy, misty day, it might be a little bit disappointing to go through all this effort to get up here. But we lucked out. On our way back down, through these same cable cars, you just stand up inside these large cable cars. It wasn't crowded at all. Traveling in the month of May is just a nice time, a perfect time to be here. It's cool, but not cold. And it's yeah. not crowded. And we're able to enjoy a snack on the way down, too. Halfway down, there's a restaurant. Get some hot coffee, have a little bite. And from the table, there's a nice picture window where you have a good vista out at the ski slope. Watching these skiers go by, and then they're going to slide down and ride back up that same cable car back to the top of the Clan Matterhorn. And they can ski up and down all day long. And all summer long as well, too. It's the highest summer slopes in the Alps. And there's three stages of cable cars to get back down into Zermatt. But once again, we're not going to ride the cable car all the way down. You could if you want to, but we've chosen to opt out and take a hike. From Zmut, it's three quarters of an hour. They measure the distance in time on those signposts rather than in miles or kilometers. When you see three quarters, that's three quarters of an hour. So that's a pretty easy hike. And it's all downhill, and that helps. Entering this little hamlet of Zmut, they've got a couple of restaurants here. It's not even a hamlet. This is what they call an Alp. It's just a little cluster of buildings. And there are a few cottages, a few vacation cottages here. 
and a couple of restaurants you could stop and have a bite or like us we're just walking through and taking a look grab a few pictures and adieu leaving Zmut behind as we make our way further downhill heading back to Zermatt Once again, we've got wildflowers and snow-covered mountain peaks, green hillsides. What a package. Some fellow hikers trying to figure their way with a map. Well, it's pretty simple if you just stay on the path. You just keep heading down. Some people like to hike up. They say better exercise and also they get a view looking into the mountains that way. Well, either way, you have a nice view. Some animals along the way. Here's some frisky dog playing with the uh, Heidi type master and he wants to play continuing down takes about an hour to hike all the way down to Zermatt that's not bad that's an easy hike and along the way you've got some scattered homes you've got animals to check out we're gonna run into a patch of sheep just ahead some pretty stone walls around them. These mountain meadows are ideal for sheep. They just run loose and chew their way. It's like the country has been mowed down by sheep. Everything is so neat and trimmed in Switzerland and the sheep must have something to do with that. It's like they've been weed eating the whole country. The scenery is beautiful. I like the pines, the scent of the pine in mm -hmm. the air. Mm -hmm. um, nice, sunny, um, clean, fresh air that you notice over here. Yeah. Really? And relatively easy walking. Uh -huh. not, not strenuous at all. Yeah. So we're just going downhill. Really? Yeah. And uh, easy downhill, not steep downhill. I guess a time to enjoy the beauty around you, you know, the mountains, the forest. Mm -hmm. It's great, great to be out here. The rest of our small group decided to ride the cable car all the way back down to Zermatt, but they missed out on these sites. Well, here's what you didn't see, gang. It was a nice vista. We had some nice streams and mountain forest, easy trail coming down. Nicely prepared surface there, no problem. Bubbling brook. And then it levels off as you get down towards the bottom of the hill and then all of a sudden you're back in Zermatt, back in the village. Back to civilization. There's the big church. There's a, a couple of luxury hotels here. Five star deluxe hotels. The Zermatterhof is one of the famous ones. Many, many shops to take your money and give you some great merchandise in return. We'll take you inside in just a moment, give you a little sample, or you could pick up a Pate Philippe. Very expensive watch, or you can buy a cheap watch. Or let's say a less expensive watch. For $100, you can get a good Swiss chronometer. $200, you get an excellent one. And here are some other things you might like to purchase. T-shirts, you've got porcelain, there's pewter, jewelry and of course the Swiss Army knife look at all the varieties the colors the sizes the shapes and the blades you could build a house with one of these things pliers scissors saw oh and a knife blade corkscrews rulers who knows what else in there it's a complete toolbox in your pocket. Especially when you get the champ. Or just uh, pick up a t-shirt. That's easy to pack. Well, the village gets a little quieter later in the day. People start to head back to their rooms or go into the various restaurants for dinner. Not McDonald's, but you can get some good Swiss food here in Zermatt. And they've got a nice restaurant at the train station. It's called the Bonhof Buffet. It's a little early for dinner yet, so there's nobody in here, but they do put on a nice spread at the Bonhof Buffet. This is the heart of town. It's the 
train station square. Some of the larger buildings around this spot. And as the evening settles in, you could even have dinner with music at the Schweitzerhof Hotel and Restaurant. That's a tradition they've maintained for many decades, music at dinner. Well, breakfast the next morning, we have a choice. There's real muesli, fresh fruits, and cheese, always Swiss cheese. They produce a lot of cheese here. And those terrific breads, cereals, eggs. Breakfast at the Alex Schloss Hotel Tenne. Uh, European breakfasts are usually a nice, good, solid meal to get you going for the day. And we are going, 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 gone. We're leaving Zermatt behind. It's time to go.